and being a little bit quicker on this on this last lap. Yeah, and uh, you're seeing some uh, faster sector times uh, coming up uh, with uh, every lap. All these cars are, of course, the same chassis built by the Land Technologies Group out of uh, Brazelton, Georgia. And uh, we also have the engines built by an American-owned company, although they are built in the UK. We've got uh, British gearboxes from Hewland as well. We've got French tyres from uh, Michelin. So uh, a truly international race car is the Super League Formula machine. And we've got a bit of a, a, a gap there between uh, fourth and fifth place seems to have separated. And uh, Galatasaray still very much in the hunt. No. It's, a, it's a shame that uh, no one could have made it, that AS Roma couldn't have made, made a move on the previous lap because now the tyres are going to go away a little bit and it's going to get more and more difficult to make, a, to make a move. Flamengo is struggling a little bit. Yeah, and Bruce, I think that uh, Robert Dornbos for Milan so pushed a bit harder because he has now closed the gap to 0.7 of a second. And uh, his last lap time, 124.7, yeah, he took... Uh, Took a fifth of a second off the Liverpool car, and this will be decided by fractions of a second, of course. But there's the gap between Roma and Corinthians, the gap between Corinthians and Rangers, and uh, the gap between Rangers and Atletico Madrid for eighth and ninth places. Basically, if you look at the four leaders, they're lapping in 124.6, 0.8.7, around the high 24s, and then you've got Flamengo in a 125.7, so in the high 25. And uh, they're all, the, he is slowing down everyone behind him, as you yeah. can see now on screen. Now, uh, the Beijing car, of course, leads the championship. And he maybe is playing a bit of a uh, percentage game here, because he'll get some very good points just from finishing in third place. So the uh, point score uh, starts with uh, 50 for a, a victory here. And basically, the guy who finished last was about eight or nine points. So, uh, Liverpool and Milan, that's the battle here, and the gap has just pulled out a little bit again. Uh, certainly, Liverpool FC are uh, responding very well, and uh, Adrian Vaez in the 21 car. Yes, uh, we can see the, the differences, the gaps standing where they are just now. I'm uh, looking to see, but it's very hard now to make a difference, and we're going to see some drivers uh, pitting very early to stop being uh, stuck in traffic and I'm thinking about uh, Beijing uh, who's going to pit early as well I, as Roma and Corinthians as soon as the window is open on lap uh, 7 or 8 I think we're going to see a few cars pitting very early Yeah, the pit window will open soon Adrian Viesley, leader of course winner at Zolder in the opening uh, race winner at Estoril in the opening race there as well in race 1 and uh, looking as if he's going to be the first man to have won three of these races, but it is very much uh, early doors at the moment. A lot can happen, and it's still very close indeed. As uh, Robert Dornbos, the uh, flying Dutchman, keeps up the pressure, and these uh, opening four cars still very close, separated by uh, just about two and a half seconds at the front of the field, and they have broken away from the rest of the field, led by Flamengo. Maybe Flamengo just managing to uh, hold a few cars up behind there. Obviously, a lot of this is down to the setup of the cars. All the drivers work very closely with their engineers, and we can look uh, from our lead car looking back now over the rear wing. Some great onboard shots coming here from uh, Balalunga, just uh, north of uh, Rome. And uh, there is Adrian Vaez comes from uh, Alicante and was you raced in the World Series by Renault, he's raced in GP2 he was a test driver briefly by the Spiker Formula 1 team and uh, this season continued to race in uh, GP2 and you can see the, the cars are starting to move a little bit uh, exiting the last corner, exiting Roma uh, the cars are, are starting to, to oversteer a little bit which means the tyres are starting to suffer and you're going to see a, a little drop in performance and as we can see now they're lapping in the in the 25s as well the leaders uh, but they've pulled away quite a big gap they've pulled away five seconds on flamengo um, and they're keeping all together and here alain uh, just uh, looping it there that's uh, his inexperience and 
Dominic Cut Merman's there from uh, Formula Atlantic in the uh, States yes. having a surprise first drive. There is a, okay, the, the car is uh, quite tricky, especially to drive around those very, very uh, slow and narrow corners. And you could see he locks the rear wheels it's because he's a little bit under pressure and he's, uh, he's staying on the brakes a little bit too long. And those carbon brakes are working extremely well when they get hot. And if you, you stay on them, then you're going to lock wheels. Yeah. And that's what happened. Uh, by the way, that's the corner where the car, the Align car, crashed yesterday. Yes, so. <laughs> it's not the right corner. No, not Align, the right of course, corner. a town in the uh, United Arab Emirates, in, uh, close to Dubai, where they have one of the very best football teams in the whole of the Middle East. So, the action continuing here. The gap now has gone to uh, just over one second between Liverpool FC and uh, AC Milan, Adrian Faiz and uh, AC Milan, of course, Robert Dornbos, Davide Rigor third for Beijing, and then it's the uh, Galatasaray car, which is having a very good run indeed, with uh, Alessandro Pierre Guidi, another Italian driver, who uh, is using his circuit knowledge to uh, very good effect here. Yes, uh, indeed, he did a very good start, uh, jumped over to two cars, over to Flamengo and Roma, uh, so it's a very good job from him, and he's pushing the leaders, and uh, we, we nearly see some, some uh, overtaking happening at the back of the grid as well, there's fighting everywhere. Yeah, it's all pretty close here, and I must say we've had a beautiful day, we've had some very uh, changeable weather here, we had a huge rainstorm yesterday, and uh, on... Uh, Certainly on uh, Saturday night, sorry, Friday night, uh, a huge storm here, but beautiful, clean track here at Vallelunga. And of course, so much Italian passion. So here they go, under the uh, bridge again. And Liverpool extending their lead by another tenth on that lap, so 1.2 seconds in front of uh, Milan, and then another second between Milan and Beijing, and another. Uh, a little bit less than a second between Beijing and Galatasaray. They're waiting for the pit uh, stop window to open to start their own strategy. Uh, that's coming up very soon now. Uh, the strategies, of course, depend on uh, the team manager's decision, the decision of the driver. The pit stop uh, window is now open and uh, be interested to see who comes in first. Obviously, if you go in early, Bruce, your second set of tyres, uh, you've got to make them last longer. Yes, that's true, but uh, it all depends on your strategy. If you, you didn't do such a good job in qualifying, you know that you're going to do a pit stop early and you save better tyres for the second part of the race. Uh, and that's probably what uh, uh, Beijing, Roma and Corinthians did. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to be interesting, but I think they're going to pit in early, uh, probably even now on that lap or, or within, within the two next laps. Yeah, they're going to hope to uh, get out into some uh, clean air but uh, certainly uh, Adrian Baez from Spain is being very impressive for Liverpool FC. And there the Beijing car goes into the pits. So absolutely right, Bruce. He's decided to uh, take that early stop. And, uh, Which is, it, it is a good strategy to do that because now he will start again on track probably on his own and he will have to push very hard on his own. Oh, be careful at the back, there's a wheel yeah. in the way. And this doesn't seem the slickest of stops that we've seen in the Super League formula. Not so bad, it looks okay to me. Yeah. And there we go, there are some other cars in the pits. I think there is a red car there, not so yeah. sure about who that is. I think, I think we saw... That oh, was Roma. Roma's as, in there. As expected, Roma did, it, did their own pit stops. I think Flamengo did the pit stop as well to defend their position. And uh, which means that it's not such a good move for Roma because they're going to be stuck behind the Flamengo car. And Frank Still. Pereira, the driver. Frank, who uh, started the season racing in the IndyCar series. Unfortunately, the team uh, ran short of funds and had to put a pay driver in. It's very good. We're back. Uh, we're on the Frank Pereira there into the first corner. He has complete free space in front of him because I think the pit stop wasn't so great. Uh, but he's going to be at least able to push and he's out of the traffic, which is pretty good. So, in fact, we've had four cars making pit stops. We've had uh, Beijing, Flamengo, Roma and Eindhoven have already stopped. And uh, at the uh, front of the Liverpool car, still pulling away from AC Milan. As we said, uh, the driver, looking, uh, Adrian Baez, looking to score his uh, third victory. 
and the AC Milan and oh sorry Liverpool and AC Milan both of them in the